clothes in the distance while dodging. That's the main objective. Peace, his to the line, martial arts academy. Because we're going to talk about something that's a taboo in the Wing Chun community, which is head movement. Stay tuned. So the simplest definition of head movement is moving your head. Uh, but when we talk about head movement, it is not literally just moving your head because to move your head, you actually need to move your entire body. So if you just move your head like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, please don't do that though. Never, don't, don't do that. But if you move <laughs> your head in any of those, uh, in that type of fashion, it's not good head movement. So real head movement, you want to really get your head off of the line of attack, which is right here. This is my center line. So this is the line of attack. Somebody wants to hit me square in my nose. Then head movement is moving from here to here. Here to here. Here even to here, right? Here, circle under, here, circle under to the sides, etc. Or even stepping back. Stepping back and adding a little bit of lean. That I don't recommend as much, depending on, if you're going against a very aggressive fighter, I don't recommend stepping back and leaning. If you're going against somebody who just kind of picks you off, a more finesse fighter, you know, who's a little bit more patient, you know, they only throw like one or two strike combinations, then you can step back and lean. Um, but if they throw on anything from four or higher, or even if they throw on one, but they're always advancing, don't lean back. Head movement is a great tool in Wing Chun. I know a lot of people say that whenever you do head movement, you're breaking your structure. You're breaking your Wing Chun structure. And like, yeah, I get it. The structure is the end all be all to everything when it comes to Wing Chun and internal martial arts. But you have to recognize that the structure plays a part in a certain area or scenario. And in order to get to the area where that structure helps you, you might sometimes need head movement. Now, I don't, if you're in a self-defense situation, I don't recommend moving your head seven times. I recommend moving your head once or twice at most, but advancing as you're moving your head. And then on that second motion of moving your head, make sure that you deliver a strike as well, which is a little bit of the drill that we practice here. Um, but if you're using Wing Chun for the ring, Wing Chun for sparring, Wing Chun, trying to apply it for uh, MMA, or you know, you, you just like Wing Chun and you like fighting, sparring people, then yeah, definitely get into your head movement. Reason why is because it'll save your life and it'll put longevity on your life. As, as a fighter, the goal is to not get hit, but hit others. In self-defense, the goal is to survive with as minimal damage delivered to you as possible. So head movement once or twice and then attacking is great for self-defense. Head movement constantly is great for sparring or MMA or any type of sport combat type of situations that you're trying to apply your wing time for. Remember, uh, don't get too caught up in the tradition. Make sure that the principles of Wing Chun is up to date for what you're uh, using it for. Hook, people say, what you're supposed to do is time die. Well, if somebody throws a nice gazelle punch and it's a real tight hook, one, time die isn't gonna work too well because any good hooks, they just come around the time. What you wanna do is more so you die. But say somebody is like really strong, like Mike Tyson. See, I'm not gonna stand there and try to take a hook from Mike Tyson if I have the reflexes to dodge. Because though I might be able to block Buda and hit him and maybe dissipate a little bit, or Tanda and hit the shoulder and maybe dissipate the power a little bit. He's also used to getting hit, and he's bigger than me, and he's stronger than me, and he's coming full force. And with all of those factors combined, if I see this hook, I'd much rather duck under it instead of trying to take it, because if I duck under, move to the outside, then I could go in for my sweeps, my takedowns, um, <laughs> you know, and kind of end the fight, not necessarily, and kind of get a more advantageous position when it comes to fighting or sparring somebody that's very strong. So somebody strong and they're throwing hooks, go ahead and break the structure for a moment, move and recover your structure, which is all what 
uh, the wooden dummy and Bu G is about where it comes to breaking structure when you're in a compromised position and then recovering and getting your structure back as fast as possible and gain and getting into an advantageous position in order to finish out the fight. So yeah, in that case, in that scenario, these are higher level techniques in a sense, um, but it's something that we all should add to our Wing Chun repertoire. Now you can sit there and try to pop Sao and Tan Sao. Okay, that was more gone. But anyway, sit there and Tan and Pak and Bong and Fuk Sao, all that you want. And I know that Tan, Bong, and Fuk is the heart of Wing Chun. But head movement will ultimately take our Wing Chun to the next level. It will allow us to be able to compete with anybody in any field just by moving our head off of the center line. Thank you everybody for watching. Go ahead and punch that like button before I chain punch you in the face. Nah, I'm, I'm just playing. I won't do that. Because you learn how to move your head. So I shouldn't be able to chain punch you in the face. But obviously if you didn't watch this video, then you probably don't know how to move your head out the way. So now I'll probably chain punch you in the face. But that's neither here nor there because if you didn't watch this video, then you wouldn't be knowing about me saying I'm gonna punch you in the face so that means everybody who watched this video should like it and should subscribe for more